Hi, my name's Kat. I'm one of the advisors at Luminate Careers in Coaching. Lots of young people are now feeling uncertain and daunted about what they want to do next year, now that there's been so many changes. Some of you will have made your post-16 applications and option choices quite a while ago, and you might now be thinking about whether it's still the right choice for you. We're here to reassure you that there are options, things can change, and to answer some questions that you might have. It would be a good idea to contact the employer or training provider that you have applied to. They will let you know whether your apprenticeship can still go ahead. You also need to think about a backup plan. Have you made one? It may be that you can apply to a local college to study a similar sector area and then apply for apprenticeships again once you have done this. Remember, apprenticeships are for anyone over the age of 16. There'll be some videos on this channel about apprenticeships over the next few weeks. It would be worthwhile speaking to your sixth form to see what their policy is and find out a bit more about how they are awarding GCSE results this year. Youth Employment has some really good articles about this on their website. You do also want to think about a backup plan. Mm -hmm. Have a listen to the video on this channel called What Next, as this explains all about the different options. You can then apply to the most appropriate option as a backup plan. You will then decide in August, once you have had your results, which option is the best for you. Think back to why you made the decision to apply to college in the first place. More than likely, you made the decision based on your future plans and the suitability of the courses that were on offer at Sixth Form and at college. Those thoughts and that decision-making process will still apply now. It could be that your time at school ended so quickly and abruptly and it really wasn't what you hoped and imagined and maybe that's what's thrown you. Have a talk with somebody about how you chose your course at college initially. What were your reasons for choosing that course and that college? Where did your ideas come from? Perhaps write down what's making you think that college isn't for you now. Why did you decide against sixth form in the first place? Have you talked to anyone about all of these thoughts and feelings? What do they say? If college took away their offer, how would that make you feel? Try to remember why you made the decision in the first place to apply for college. If the college that you have applied for has any virtual open evenings or open days, book yourself onto one of those. It could be a good chance to remember why you applied in the first place. Similar to the last slide, think back to the reasons why you applied in the first place. Do those reasons still stand or have you changed your mind about your longer term plans? Think about what you would want to do instead. What are the reasons you now want to change course? What has changed your mind? If you do still want to change, then you need to contact your school or college, the one that you've applied to, and find out what the process is for changing your course. It could be that you need to speak to the head of sixth, sixth form or student services. The disruption and changes to how university will deliver their courses may feel disappointing and really not what you were looking forward to. You do have the option to defer going to university until next year when hopefully things are back to normal. There are two ways you can do this. Make your application this year, but apply as a deferred entrant. The university will accept your application this year, so you have the safety net of knowing you have a place waiting for you at the end of your year out. Another option could be that you don't apply this year and wait for the next UCAS cycle when you have an, a better idea of how things are, what you want to study and where. Many people who do this wait and apply directly through clearing. Deferring and taking a year out could be a good option if you are worrying about not getting the traditional uni experience if Corona hasn't gone by September. But one thing to consider is, it could only affect your first term, or at the most your first year. Degree courses generally are three to four years long in most subjects, so you won't miss out entirely on the university experience. 
you will be one of the first of a generation to grow and develop through this new way of learning, coping and developing at university, developing valuable adapting to change skills, as well as many more. This is an experience you can later draw on in life, in interviews and potentially in your future career. Remember, the main reason for taking a gap year is to work and save money and perhaps travel. Those options have also been impacted due to coronavirus, so think about this when you're making your decision. Whatever you decide, remember, challenge helps you to build resilience, it helps you grow and less challenging times will come. Think about the positive things that you could get out of the year ahead. It's a really difficult time at the moment and there's lots of uncertainty about what the labour market looks like. This obviously impacts on what work experience you can get too. Fortunately, there are lots of options to try and gain some virtual work experience, not just in medicine, but many other areas. The Oak National Academy have run a virtual week of work experience, giving information on lots of different areas. The Brighton and Sussex Med Medical School also have a virtual work experience programme that you can sign up to. If you are interested in specific area, then you could also see if there are, there are any volunteering opportunities, as this could be classed as gaining work experience. So check out what options there are in your area. It's also a good idea to contact the university that you're thinking about applying to, see what their policy is and if they can re recommend anything. Again, it's a really difficult time to be looking for employment as there is so much uncertainty about the labour market. We know that a lot of jobs that young people typically go for have been reduced due to closures within the hospitality and retail industry. Raising the participation age means that you must continue in education or training until you're 18. So that's either school sixth form, college or a learning provider. Work-based learning such as an apprenticeship or a traineeship. If you have an offer from college or sixth form, what you might want to do is explore apprenticeship vacancies if earning money is a high priority for you now. Apprenticeships are where you will gain a qualification while working. You will spend 80% of the working week in employment and 20% at your place of study. You'll earn a salary and your course fees will be covered by your employer and government. If your family receive child benefit and or other benefits, these will continue if you stay in education or training. You could also look at working part time alongside your sixth form or college course um, and through the holidays, so that's weekends and holidays. What you could do is spend your time putting together a CV and a cover letter so that when the time comes, you are ready to apply for part time jobs. Gaining further education and qualifications will also improve your employability for the future. The 16 to 19 bursary fund provides financial support to students to help them overcome specific barriers to participation so that they can remain in education. Student services at college or your or sixth form should be able to offer you advice and support with checking eligibility and how to apply. That also includes free school meals within further education. I hope this video answers some of your questions. Remember, your path is not set in stone and there are people out there who can support you. Over the next few weeks, there'll be many more videos on post 16 and post 18 opportunities. If you do have any questions, you can contact us on the email address on the screen or visit our website for more information and helpful resources. Good luck.